future. We're in physical education class, but we need yeah. Wi Fi to take the quiz. Yeah. I get it. I get it. And I'm actually not able to get it. Probably on Google Wi Fi. It's working. Yeah. working for me, but yeah, I was, I'm not on the public Wi Fi. That's the most paper. I am. I'm on the public. And it's, it's working for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quizzes yeah. and tests. Yeah. That's not just something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In my life, I've never had any. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us? No, I, yeah, I can hear you pretty well. Can you hear me? I can't hear Brian. Not like a little kid. The rules of the game. The first time I ever heard of this was like the rules of pickleball. Can you hear me now? Can you try again? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, people out. online can hear me. <laughs> Reporting in progress. Reporting in progress. Can you try again, Brian? Yeah, can you hear me now? Uh, I, don't believe on it. I can hear you, Brian. Great. Are people there ready to go? Ready? I think so, yes. Okay, go ahead and call the meeting to order. Would all who wish join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have four proposed agenda adjustments. You, you have them in the draft agenda, but to read them out loud, I would propose adding item 8E.I.1, a first reading of policy JIE, pregnant students, removing 8EII.4 and 8EII.7, B-R2, uh, those are regulations on student sex discrimination, harassment, and employee sex discrimination and harassment. And I, adding item 8F, approve a new educational technician for multi-language learner program. I would make a motion to uh, make all those changes to the agendas or a second? A second. Is there any further agenda changes proposed? We'll go ahead and vote. Um, I can't see everybody, but I, I'll call on the order, I'm assuming. Jake? Aye. Gavin? Aye. Noah? Aye. Mark? Aye. I also vote aye. The agenda is adjusted. I would make a motion to approve the minutes of August 20th as presented. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion or corrections? We'll go ahead and vote. Jake? Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. Also vote aye. Carries five to zero. I would make a motion to approve payroll warrant five, regular warrant 26E, and regular warrant five. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? Go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. I also vote aye. Carries five to zero. The floor is now open for public comment. Not necessarily seeing anybody, but online. There's nothing in the room either, Brian. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. So um, we'll start with acknowledgments. Jake. Uh, nothing at this time. Kevin. Nothing at this time, thank you. Noah. Uh, nothing, just, you know, it's still the start of school. It's great to see everything ramping up and all the work that's gone into that, so, yep. Yep, great. Mark. Uh, nothing for me, thank you. Anything from the students? Not at this time. 
Okay. I don't think I have anything except like Noah noted. I think this is our first board meeting since school started. So, or maybe, maybe since some of the grades started. So appreciate all the hard work that's gone into that. Meredith? Um, there's some acknowledgements listed on the agenda from um, various donations. Uh, I think five of them are different donors choose projects that uh, different staff members have applied for and received. So we want to acknowledge donors choose and the, the folks uh, who funded those projects, but also our teachers for seeking out these projects to do, um, you know, different um, to, to augment their programming and their classrooms with those funds. And also the donation to the Asa Adams Library in memory of Vicki Lynch. I also want to just acknowledge, I don't think I mentioned it in the last meeting, the Orono Stops program was kicked off recently. And um, really our intersection with that is bus safety. Uh, Orono Stops is a, a broader campaign though that the town of Orono and Orono PD is doing to just promote safety in Orno. And um, Sierra Bus is a great partner in that. We had a meeting with them this week. And so uh, there's good communication between the police department and Sierra Bus um, around bus safety. And I just want to acknowledge both of them for their efforts to keep our, our children safe. Great, and thank you. Oh, okay, yep. Go ahead and move on to principal reports. We'll start at ASA with Carrie. Good evening, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> so believe it or not, this is day nine and all 332 of our ASA students are settling into the rhythm of the school year. And I just wanna give very big thank yous to all the staff that have been stepping up and doing all of the things to help our students adjust to the new routine of this school year. It certainly has been busy and people have just been really going above and beyond to do all the things to step in and help and iron out wrinkles and cover duties and all of that stuff. So staff has been absolutely amazing um, and we're excited for the new school year to be off and running. Um, I also wanna give a huge thank you to Derek who had our parking lot restriped. We came in this morning, <laughs> yeah, you see Maddie waving her fingers. It's quite magical to have uh, crosswalks again uh, that people can see <laughs> and notice as cars are moving through the parking lot. So that's really exciting news for us here at ASA. Um, we had our pre-K to grade two open house on Monday, August 26th. And that was a wonderful evening where our fifth grade ambassadors had the chance to do tours with families, new families throughout the building. Um, and if you saw my board report, there is a photo of the fifth grade ambassadors that joined us that evening. So shout out to all of them for coming in before school started and their willingness to help out. Um, couple, two other quick things to highlight. Uh, the Literacy Leadership Team is launching the pilot of one of the first resources that we've chosen uh, called Wit and Wisdom. We have seven staff members who will be piloting during this first trimester, which we're really excited about. Um, the Wit and Wisdom program has a primary focus of building background knowledge, but it also has a focus on comprehension, vocabulary, and speaking and listening skills. So at the end of this trimester, that group will rally and kind of see what they thought about that particular program. And then we will be piloting further programs throughout the rest of the school year and hopefully have a recommendation for you um, leaning into towards the end of trimester two. And then finally, our first staff meeting of the year, uh, Noah was able to join us and he took the staff on a walking tour down to the outdoor classroom, which was a great way to start our staff meeting. Um, there's a couple pictures in the board report of the staff down there, which Maddie was able to capture for us. And I think for some of them that had never thought about using it, it was an exciting time for them to ponder how they might use it in the future. Um, and some staff members have even tried it out that hadn't been before. So it was really great to have that opportunity as well. So I will leave it at that and questions. Any questions? We'll go ahead and move on to the, thank you. We'll go ahead and move on to the middle school. Richard. 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, nice job on your report, Carrie. And, and just like you noted, uh, we got things up and running and it seems like we're well settled in now. And, and uh, the, the opening of school seems like a long time ago now, uh, in, in a good way, in a good way. Um, but, you know, we've been very busy uh, with the opening of school. Class schedules are, are sort of set now pretty well, and uh, laptops are in student hands, and uh, we've welcomed our sixth graders, and athletics is up and running and everything. So we're into the full full swing. Uh, uh, students have, uh, uh, I spoke with Mrs. Hardery today, we're, we're down to three students who uh, what we call our collection of paperwork, but uh, beginning of the year paperwork. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, different forms and everything's in electronic form uh, nowadays. I just haven't moved on past calling it paperwork, but uh, it's uh, students are doing a nice job this year. And the, the laptop handout really helped us with that. Um, uh, th that was sort of a carrot, if you will, for students to get their, uh, get their forms in. Uh, our new schedule, and what I mean by that is we're running five morning periods this year, and then uh, and then we have uh, then we have lunch and advisory and two uh, uh, periods in the afternoon. So that was that was a change for us at OMS, and it's working out well. Uh, I would say the morning five periods are our primary focus is uh, our core academic classes, and with our more, and our afternoon is more balanced with uh, with our specialist classes, art, PE, music, and et cetera. And those. Uh, so, so that's working out well. It was an adjustment for our students with a little later lunch this year, um, but it's uh, going well. Our our Desmos uh, uh, math program is up and running. All of our math uh, teachers are are uh, using the uh, the resources, and we are set up with a coach, uh, Jill uh, Kalb, who's uh, working with us um, in on our upcoming uh, uh, in service our early release day tomorrow. We're going to be looking at at uh, setting some uh, goals for the year around uh, Desmos implementation that we can bring back to uh, uh, Jill, our uh, Desmos coach, and, and she can uh, point us in the direction of resources to support implementation. So please, re I can give you more uh, uh, update on that in future uh, board reports. Uh, we have fall NWEA uh, scheduled for the uh, week of September 30th. In, and that uh, spills, obviously, the, uh, the last day of September there is a Monday. So Tuesday and Thursday of that week, we're going to uh, begin uh, and fall NWA assessment. And let's see, uh, I, I'm pleased to welcome Eric Blacksmith at, uh, working with our ELL students this year. He's uh, uh, doing some screening and getting uh, things up and running to support uh, our ELL learners this year. And uh, my last uh, but not least thing is uh, today we, we received our tip test for our, our Say Something uh, re Confidential Reporting System and, and uh, student training is coming up. Uh, I think we have it scheduled around uh, the 18th of September. So we'll get that up and uh, running in uh, the next couple of weeks. And that's what I have for, for this evening. Great, thanks. Any questions? Looks like we'll go ahead and move on to the high school. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Um, here at the high school, much like what Carrie and Rich were saying at the middle school, we're just really excited to be almost a couple weeks in, um, really getting our, our um, schedule set and um, helping students to finalize if they had any ad drop, you know, figure out any classes um, that needed to be altered in any way and really figuring that out together. So it's been a really successful start to the year. I just want to do a huge set, thank, uh, shout out to IT um, for their help with the computers. Um, takes us a little bit longer um, to get those things done, but the paperwork and the IT um, department work together well. And um, most students almost all have uh, laptops at this point. So it's really exciting. Um, along with that, and I didn't put this in the report, so I apologize, but we also had a uh, training for Securely Pass, which is going very well. Um, and we're continuing to learn how to utilize that system to better serve our students. Um, and knowing where they are in the building, helping them with appointments, um, and just being able to understand and give and provide data to help them uh, reflect upon how they spend their time with us during the school day. Additionally, as what Carrie said, uh, our ambassadors uh, were amazing at the beginning of the school year. 
Uh, they came together for a day before school even started, uh, worked with Emily Francis to organize some games um, and some activities to really help those students pull together. They also each got assigned to an advisory group for the ninth grade that they'll check in with throughout the year. Um, they helped put bags together to welcome students, which I gave out 16 of them this week uh, to help welcome new students to our building. Um, so those ambassadors and Emily Francis and also Holly and Troy from Guidance, thank you so much for your part in making that first day of school uh, a success. Um, we also wanted to thank, um, not sure if how many people know, but we actually have three staff at, in Orno High School who are pregnant, which is a great and exciting way to start the school year. And Jess Barnes just put on a wonderful um, gathering um, of cupcakes and some gifts for uh, two out of the three, because uh, we found out about the third one after this fact, um, to just really celebrate um, that next step in life amongst our staff. And it was a great way to start the school year. We really had a lot of fun as a staff. Um, so just thanks to Jess Barnes for doing that and for everyone who was there to celebrate uh, their new family members that are coming. Um, and also, I don't know how many of you have seen, but the storage container behind the scoreboard, Will Stoner uh, worked hard over the summer to paint. It looks fantastic. Uh, good, to, good work for him and his family who also supported him. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate, appreciate that work. And um, open house um, was um, the evening of the first day of school with ninth graders. Uh, we had a good turnout. A lot of families where the kids were able to show them around the building. They got to meet the staff, uh, got to answer some questions. It was, it was a really good evening. And again, ambassadors, but in this case, family ambassadors were present, which was great to have them there to help welcome new families into our district, into our school. Um, and then we also had um, we our music information night uh, within the last week or so, and that was provided mostly information for fall musical, but also for uh, the jazz band um, and upcoming uh, show choir uh, possibilities. And it was a great turnout. Uh, parents got to learn about the new staff we have for our fall musical. They heard that Shrek was the play, um, and the kids have um, did auditions last week. They really started rehearsing this week and are extremely excited. And I think it's gonna be a fantastic show, um, especially if you know the kids and you see who's casted in what role. I think <laughs> I think it's gonna be really fun. So we, we invite you to enjoy that um, right before Thanksgiving, but um, that was a good evening as well. Meredith? So I'll round out tonight's report with the culmination of um, what is really two and a half years worth of work. Um, and that culmination is in the form of our final decennial report from NEASC. Um, the, I think that the framework that undergirds um, the observations and the commendations in this report is really an authentic engagement, um, not only at the high school, but district-wide with questions about what it is that students need from us in these evolving times and how we're gonna work together um, to meet those needs. When we had our collaborative conference visit in the spring of 22, um, you know, we had to, <clears throat> excuse me, do a comprehensive study in advance of that and then reflect on um, the degree to which we were meeting um, the standard in the foundational elements, the elements of accreditation that NIAS says are really non-negotiable. And um, at the time, the out of the, the six foundational elements, we rated ourselves as not meeting three of them. Um, and in the work that, um, you know, we continued through the spring of 22 up through the spring of 24, when um, they came back to check in on how we were doing, um, we landed with um, five of the six uh, foundational elements as meeting the standard, only one not meeting. Um, and the one that we are still not meeting is in the realm of curricular documentation. And that is one that NEASC acknowledges, you know, we have made tremendous progress toward um, and we just still have more work to do. Um, in the end, um, NEASC uh, issued commendations for us regarding the secure and inclusive environment that prioritizes equity and diversity. Uh, the alignment of all planning documents from curriculum to equity to strategy, indicating thoughtful collaboration and shared vision. Um, and that was in advance of the finalization of our strategic plan, which I think that, um, you know, takes that commendation even further. They noted our authentic, methodical and collaborative approach to curriculum development, our emphasis on the individual needs of students and student agency, 
our comprehensive equity action plan, our philosophical and financial commitment to small class sizes and diverse course offerings that allows us to offer personalized learning and that builds meaningful relationships with teachers, our emphasis on real world experiences and career exploration, our commitment to professional development and interdisciplinary approaches to learning, ensuring quality and innovative teaching practices, um, our inclusive leadership process used to create the strategic plan that relies on the input of stakeholders from you know, across, across our community. And then finally, our commitment to see all students and individuals and support them in their individual growth. Um, you know, and living the 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 day to day life of schools, it can be really easy um, to lose sight of the big picture um, compass that guides our work. And reading this report, something that stood out to me was how, um, for folks coming in and observing us from the outside, um, those pieces were obvious, and the fact that we are working together. Um, not just within the building, but across the district um, was also obvious to them. So um, thank you for, you know, the support that the you all offer to the work that we do in the building. Thank you to Jen Branchflower and Margie Innes for leading this work. And it is going to be eight years until we have another NEASC visit. So cheers to that as well. Any questions? I would just like to uh, you know, add to what you said. I know that the NEASC process took an enormous amount of work and also produced a lot of thoughtfulness and uh, you know, uh, intent for change. So I, I just really appreciate and commend all the work that has gone into that. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. We'll go ahead and move on to the superintendent, Meredith. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is listed on the agenda, the UTC equipment bond referendum. Um, Kevin knows a bit about this as well. I shared some information in the board folder that uh, just shares kind of a quick overview that um, Amanda Peterson, the director of UTC, um, put together. Uh, basically, this is a, uh, a bond program that the state developed to support CTE uh, needs to um, you know, take care of capital needs in, in their centers and, and programs. Uh, UTC applied for a share, a piece of the 20 million that's in this state um, program and was awarded 8.74 uh, million. Uh, but the caveat is it has to go out to referendum in all of the 30 something towns. It's probably on here, how many towns um, that are in our, our region. And um, it that wouldn't that in itself is kind of a big lift, but what made it an even larger lift is the timeline uh, of notification uh, that left UTC really uh, scrambling to get information and all of the required um, uh, really paperwork out to all of these towns to get it on the uh, November ballot. So um, our town has the information and um, I think is on track to have this on, on the November ballot. Um, there's no cost to, you know, to our towns um, to get this money. It's just a matter of, you know, the question has to go before the voters to accept the money. Um, so I'll be including this in district communications we send out to try to help inform, you know, our constituency at least about this and understand that it's not, you know, uh, money that we're taking on debt to um, have to pay for, but it's it's basically free money from the state that we just have to approve uh, our regional tech center to um, receive. They're using it to upgrade equipment. Uh, she lists, um, and I included, um, I think I did include the listing of all the program um, upgrades that this money is going to fund. So it's a, you know, a significant um, award for, for our um, technical center. Kevin, would you add anything to that? I think just, and you may have said it, but it sounded like you said 8 million, where it's like 1.8. Oh, 1.8. Yeah. Yes. Still significant. Yes, yes, 1.8 million. Any questions about that? 
Is it it has to pass with a majority across the thirty towns, or it has to pass in each town? I hope it's the first. Um, I do not know the answer to that question. I think there. Let's see. I'm sure I meant to figure it out. That was a question we had last Thursday when we were yeah. having our board meeting. Okay. Yeah, I don't see the answer to that here in the paperwork and. So you haven't heard the answer to that. No. no, we have a meeting on Thursday to approve the warrants, then we'll deliver them to towns. Yeah. So you'll I'll find maybe out. find out the answer to that. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, so a few other things to report on. Um one is in addition to the um park ASA parking lot and crosswalk lines that were painted in the early morning hours, the pickleball court lines were also painted um, by the same vendor. So they are now in place on a, one of the tennis courts um, and we're going to purchase some nets to put out there with the remaining funds from the town. So, um, you know, we'll let folks know that that's out there and available um, for folks to use. The, um, we've had a, a, a kind of impactful or, or, I don't know, complicated maintenance issue come up with one of the lights at the football field. Um, you know, there are four, if you've been out there, you may have observed there are four wooden light poles that have, you know, big banks of, I think, 12 big lights on, on each pole. Um, there are really uh, three issues that have been determined to need remedy. Um, one is one of the fence posts uh, we think worked its way down and pierced or, or penetrated uh, the underground wire that runs across the field. Um, this wire was existing wire that we had in place and Von Thibodeau had it surveyed, but it called out at the time that they were doing the field that because it wasn't um, encased in conduit that it the the surveying was kind of imprecise and that there was a chance that the fencing would cause damage to it at the time and it, it was a you know there was a lot of documentation that bowman provided to me when i brought this up with them last week so um long story short bowman's not liable for the cost um because all the documentation at the time kind of laid out you know this concern and gave us options and we chose um the option of we would fix something if a problem presented um so we've turned off the power to that pole because they're on separate circuits. Um, but at the same time, it was discovered that there was also current coming down the pole from ballast that were going bad. Um, and so it was quite a hazard that was discovered. Someone told us that there was they they were shocked out there. So we you know investigated it and have determined there are really those two issues going on that um, the third issue is that the whole um, panel really needs to be replaced. Um, it's old and it's not tripping the way it should. In that situation, it should trip off when that kind of thing is happening and it's not doing that. Um, our electrician says those panels are just kind of notorious for that kind of thing. Um, and so we need to replace it. So all of that being said, Climo is uh, working on a new power feed and we're just going to leave the line in place underneath and just abandon use of it. Um, and he's looking at the, the possibility of either um, disabling the bad ballast in the light or replacing all of those lights with LED. He says it's gonna be a big cost, so I'm gonna look at it and see what we're gonna do. And then I've asked him for a cost to uh, replace the panel. So, you know, these are 30 year old lights, right? And the wire has been there a long time. So I guess I'm I'm not surprised we're at this point, but it is surprising to me that, um, you know, they all happened at the same time. So uh, it was just kind of coincidental that the two things happened at the same time with the fence and the, the bells going bad. So uh, it's safe, we've turned off the power. It's not being used right now. Uh, when the new power feed that comes to it off the press box, uh, gets connected, we we can use the light fixture um, just without the ballasts that are um, have gone bad. And um, 
but if it's not corrected before our first contest, Derek has rented a portable, um, like one of those light generator things that you see out on road construction at night. Um, so that's the issue that we've uh, discovered out there. Uh, any questions about that? I know that's a lot. When when is that first phone contest? Mm, we have one Friday night, but there's a, a middle school game tomorrow that may run into uh, nighttime. Just depends on how long it goes. Looks like we think we're going to be good for Friday. That's what it sounds like to me. I mean, the temporary ones for sure. Really yeah. Like we should be. Yeah, maybe if he can get it done in time. Sound sound optimistic in the last I heard. So yeah. it's temporary already out there. Just yes. Case. Yeah. I mirrored it that the the uh, middle school game is a five o'clock start. Just just right. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking it it might run into nighttime. Although it's six thirty now. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we're ready if we need that. So it sounds like you you aren't sure of the fence, or you're absolutely sure that like the fence cutting into it. No, that, we're sure now that that's what was okay. happening okay. with part of it. Okay. So I understand. If there's any way they're actually. Not just a coincidental, but one. Right. It's just it, I was initially skeptical that they weren't related, yeah. but I, I, it makes sense now that it's all been explained, and I do, I trust our electrician has thoroughly diagnosed this. Yeah. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. How how much did it end up cost with the pickleball lines? Um, nine hundred dollars. Four fifty per court. And we paid like that was all from the town or so the town allocated a thousand. Mm -hmm. So we have another hundred dollars for netting. Mm -hmm. Um, the last thing I want to share with you is the strategic plan draft document. Rachel's been working diligently on getting um our document ready. We put the we were trying to finish, uh, get it to a certain point this afternoon. And, and we feel like it's at a point that it's ready for more eyes to take a look at it and let us know if you have any feedback. Um, there's a document in the, in the um, drive, but I'm also going to share my screen and just show everyone. Wait a second. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. Stop sharing. Okay. So um, this is the long version that we have um, been putting together to be the kind of glossy publication that we have talked about sharing with all families, you know, putting out in our um, sending communities and having this be kind of a um, a, I don't know, a, a, a document that we share far and wide. So um, I think we've incorporated all of the elements that we talked about as a team, uh, but we've also been mindful to try to keep the document as digestible as possible for a broad audience. Um, so you, you've you seen all these pieces before, none of this, con well, you've seen most of this content before, um, really, it's now layout and um, kind of presentation. The um, This page is that context setting for how we came to, um, you know, this work and, and kind of the context of the time we're in now for implementing this plan. Um, and then these are the um, two pages that, that give mission, vision, and profile of the learner and values. So you can see those, uh, we put mission, vision, and values here. Um, and we try to just put lots of, lots of different views into the school through pictures to you know, have pictorial representations of you know, a lot of the, the ways that our students experience school. Um, and tried to keep that, as I said last time, that river imagery um, in here somewhat. Um, after this page, we transition into the goals and we have here this statement about 
um, measurement and accountability. Again, not new, you've seen that before. This is the one page overview of all six goals that we've just tried to put in these first pages, like the first five or six pages, we've tried to put, if you read, read no further, you could get the basics of the plan. That was kind of the thinking and what we had talked about as a team, a leadership team uh, doing. Um, and then we get into the detail pages for each goal. The, um, you know, what would it look like if it was achieved statement and then the action steps um, statements. So we have that for all six goals. And then we have a section at the end, and this is kind of a question in my mind is if this is the right place. This is content you haven't seen in this format but none of it is new information for, for, for the board or for folks involved in the process. So this, this starts our section of, like we wanted to put together some data to share with people, kind of a snapshot of our district. And so this page has um, just a snapshot of each school listing enrollment, average class size, some of the advanced offerings, some of the co and extracurricular offerings, some statements at the bottom that are summary about non-resident enrollment and you know students who um, attend Orna schools by choice, the enrollment trend, and then a statement around um, kind of our reputation and draw for special education um, programming. And then a couple of pages that just have some other snapshot elements. This is a student performance page. And this is, you know, and I don't have on here the um, when this data was pulled from. I probably should add, add that. Um, and then a page about um, financial investment and then staffing, some staffing data. And that's what we've that's where we've stopped with the data. Um, you know, we had we had lots of data we could put in here, but we were trying to kind of boil it down to some simple, like some some of the basic pieces of our operation, and um, thinking about the kinds of data that maybe folks would be um, like that most people would understand and most people would um, be curious about, kind of on a first level, first kind of inquiry about the district. And then we close with just some contact info, list board members. So all total at 16 pages, but there's one blank page. So including the cover page, like 15 pages of content. Wonder if you have any feedback or thoughts about this. I like the aesthetics. Looks, it's a uh, easy to access. It does seem very digestible. The numbers are right. There's enough there to kind of, I mean, tutor on horn, right? In comparison to other states doing on average, mm -hmm. without it being just like over and over and over again. Yeah. It's where a good plan. What the hell? What's all right? Um, where will this be accessible from? Like, how will people access this? Well. We'll have it on the website, but we're thinking we'll um, send this out to all our um, families, probably via mail, like a bulk mail, um, provide it maybe in the town offices of the towns that send to students, or we, we haven't talked about doing like town-wide bulk mails to all of those towns. We could, and that's something that's kind of a a question about do we want to do that um, and you know have it in all of our offices and places like that okay so are you collecting feedback over the next like few days of going on this or yeah so if you want to yeah. think about it yeah Maybe like mine and like some minor little things here and there but um yeah 
And uh, did you find sort of the data? Did you put like average class size in that data? It's in this page uh, here uh, for each school. We have a bullet about average class size. We had a graph to start with and it just felt like too many graphs. And so we tried to boil down really, <clears throat> I don't know, there were five or six different slides in our slide deck of, that this page kind of represents. So it's a lot in one page, but it kind of follows a, a pattern for each school where we're talking about enrollment, talking about class size, talking about you know, program offerings, and then some summary at the bottom. The but white yeah. line on the bottom left. Yeah, there's a lot of editing things Little. that I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if you see things, just let us know. I just saw like five. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <No, laughs> I mean, I mean, a couple thoughts. First, this looks excellent. I'm very glad we uh, had Rachel do this instead of go to a graphic artist. <laughs> Probably a much better job as well as a, a less expensive job. So that's, I appreciate that, Rachel. Um, and I know Meredith spent a lot of time on it too. Um, I do think if we're thinking about printing this like a glossy 16 pages is gonna be a magic number. So we kind of have a page to work with and we should think about what we wanna do with that. One thing I think that maybe I, I agree with the general principle of squishing down the data summary, but uh, I, I feel like our special education program maybe got a little bit short shrift. That could be something that could go in there. I also feel as we start to turn, you know, our next board meeting, we have a conversation about uh, branding and messaging and marketing. Sometimes just having the ask in this kind of a brochure makes sense. And in this case, the ask would be, you know, how can you attend Orono schools and talk about um, different ways students can come to the Orono schools would be another thing to think about. But um, I don't have a super strong opinion, but I suspect if we're going to, you know, do something nicer than just printing it on a color copier at the school, 16 pages is going to be almost as cheap as 15. So we might want to think about that. Um, I assume the answer is yes, but I just have to ask for... Uh, Assume we have uh, permissions on all the pictures. Yeah, Rachel. Double check. Yeah, is double checking. We we feel like the answer is yes, but we're going to have folks verify for us. Great, thank you. So is that very, those permissions are through the general, because I, I think I saw my kid in there. I don't remember specifically permissions for this thing. It's the beginning of school paperwork. Yeah, it's school paperwork. Yeah, I guess I, yeah. Okay. Like, we don't ask per. Right. So it's a blanket. But it's, it's like, there's like a check for like me, for like me. Yeah. Things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, um, Feedback on the mailing it, a bulk mail out to all the sending communities. Is there a way to narrow that down a little bit to sending communities who like have kids who would be interested? Well, not even just kids in general, not even interested. You know what I mean? Like, well, it would be the five, right? No, no, no. I'm saying just the, the families that have right. middle schools. Oh, I'm not sure where we would get that data. Or even middle and elementary, maybe, but yeah. Like, I guess we could do a, a request from districts for. We can get that, then I would be all supportive yeah. of that, whether it be just middle school or middle school and elementary school. But I think that would be a great idea. Like for school age children. Yes. In our K communities. The USPS offered uh, a mailing campaign called EDDM, um, Every Door Direct Mail. You could actually choose uh, streets in towns and neighborhoods that you wanted to send mail to. Um, so that might be an option. Um, and food for thought, uh, they used to have some technology discounts if you added things such as uh, a barcode that linked to a video, um, which might be a nice option on the last page uh, in terms of 16 pages. So I came from that background. So um, 
have a little bit of knowledge in that realm. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, we need to talk more. One more thing for you to do. Right. <laughs> I mean, I guess the other question, I mean, I, I agree about in outlying towns, I would like to focus on families with kids. I don't know if that's possible, but I guess we should explore that. But um, and we should certainly send it to our own, you know, uh, enrolled students, wherever they're from, uh, their families. But um, the other question that pops into my mind is whether we should send it to Orono homeowners or Orono taxpayers. Um, we used to do something like that. And on the one hand, we regularly get 80% knock on wood uh, votes in favor of our budget. But I feel like this is a pretty positive piece of PR. So I'd be curious to hear people's thoughts about that too. I certainly think there's a lot of value in doing that. I'd want to know, um, it wouldn't be my priority group. So I guess I'd want to know what the cost is going to be, but if, if, as long as it's um, not exorbitant, I think that's a good idea. I mean, Derek, you may have a better guess than I do, but my guess is this is going to end up in the range of a couple bucks, two, three, four bucks by the time we print it out with a nice glossy and mail it. So, you know, if you think about 3,000, I don't know what the number of homes, but something like two or 3,000. I know there's 2,000 registered voters. Of course, those double homes. So, I mean, it doesn't seem like an exorbitant cost, not necessarily something I'd want to do every year, but... Um, if it's if it's running under ten thousand, it seems like it, which seems like it might might be worth taking a stab at. Yeah, uh, the the type of mailing that it will be will definitely impact the cost. Um, so that'll be important. But uh, I know the EDDM route has has some options in terms of you know things you can kind of weed out and 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 what you want to do and who you want to target. So that might be a good option. But I'd I'd say between a dollar and a dollar fifty uh, per magazine, if you will in that ballpark. Is that including postage? Including postage. That's that's from a wholesale background, not yeah. not from a retail background. So right. Do you know how much it's gonna cost? Yeah. Or should that got, yeah. Yeah, I've got a few I got some resources we can tap into for that too to to save us some money. So it's a um, look partially at Rachel here. So she'll be doing the design. It's, you know, it occurs to me that, right, the full booklet is really nice for families who are or maybe will send children to school. Um, and if we want to send, you know, some good PR to taxpayers, is it possible to maybe reduce this down to a, a nice big glossy two sided sheet that goes in the mail, sort of a, hey, we're doing awesome because of you kind of thing? Um, there's some really great stuff in here. Um, or even a shorter, just a, a, a fold out that um, certainly as a parent, I'd love to receive this because it has all the, the details of what's going to be happening in the schools potentially, but maybe a taxpayer who doesn't have children um, maybe could, you know, benefit from a smaller piece. I don't know that doesn't save money or if it's not worth the difference. I wonder if there's a way to put something in the next Orno Observer that's like a special insert. Mm -hmm. That's something of what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, reach out to Keith. Yeah, were you asking? That might be a way to get broader um, or no coverage. But it would have to be pretty condensed, I would think, like a yeah. you know, two sided eight and a half by 11, I think. Yeah. I mean, personally, at a buck 50 a pop and a I don't know what the numbers are, but a couple thousand. Again, I wouldn't do this every year, but this is something that the districts put a lot of work into. I'd, I'd probably just spend the money. Maybe maybe uh, there's a cover letter that talks to our taxpayers and says specifically, we're grateful to you, you know, kind of makes that pitch. But uh, I'd be inclined to just send the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll um, do some work to get costs and talk about it at our next meeting and make some final decisions. Sounds good. This is exciting to see it coming together.
Yeah. So if you think of anything feedback wise, please send it our way. Um, that's all I had for my report. Okay, no discussion items. Next up are action items. I don't think we have any staff hires, but we do have co-curriculars. I would make a motion to approve the slate of co-curriculars as presented. Is there a second? Second. It's pretty long. I don't think I'm gonna read it tonight, but um, it's available in the folder if people wanna see it. Any discussion or questions? I think we should probably enter it into the enter it into the minute somehow or something. So if somebody wants to look at it, if a member of the public, they can do that. But I don't see any need to read it all. I'm sure. Yeah, especially seeing who's in the audience right now. I don't think there's a need to read it. Rachel, have we normally listed all the co-curricular positions in the minutes? No, but I can attach this. I'll figure out the best way. Yeah, I don't know. Somewhere separately on the website, or I will post it. With, I I was working on the thing, so I didn't get at the board folder the things posted to the website today. But I will post it tomorrow morning, so it'll be listed as the September tenth board meeting uh, materials. Yeah, that's fine. As long as it's somewhere publicly available, in case anybody wants to look at it, that'd be great. Thank you. That sounds good, Richard. I did have one question. Uh, the newspaper at the middle school, I know it's much more active than the high school, and I, I think maybe the high school newspaper has stopped, but do you know how many issues a year there are? And this is really not questioning the position, but more yeah, just my yeah, curiosity. For sure. for how sure. many issues are on? Um, at least every month, okay? And I'd say some months we get two. So, so I'm going to say a dozen probably over the course of the school year. Oh, that's great. That's still yeah. really active. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments before we vote? All right, we'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. I also <laughs> vote aye. The motion carries 5-0. Next up, we have the vendor contract for the backup generator. You know, we have something in the folder. Meredith, you want to introduce that? Yes, Derek's uh, been working to get um, generator quotes for us. For um, We have two sources of money that we're trying to use to pay for our generators. Um, one source is uh, using some of our ESSER funds, remaining ESSER funds to spend down those that have to be spent by the end of this fiscal year. No, the end of this calendar year. Um, and the other is through the COPS grant, the, the safety grant we received. Uh, generators were outlined in, in that grant. However, what we've learned since the COPS grant was written is that our um, data on what our generators would cost was woefully um, underestimated in our COPS grant, mainly due to our th new three-phase power um, that we have in our schools. So. Um, the ASA project we're choosing to put into ESSER uh, for about two thirds of it anyway. And that's what you see um, really in uh, one of the pages you have there. Um, it's the majority of the project and it's a cost of 105,000, 105, um, $101 for the um, whole school solution. We looked at just doing partial school for just a, you know, three systems we were trying to, to have powered, um, boiler, IT, and kitchen. And the difference between that and whole school was very small. Uh, and so it doesn't make sense not to go with whole school. So um, the what I'm asking you to approve tonight is for us to enter into contract with Milton Cat. They are the only contractor we could find that could meet our timeline um, for getting this done by the end of this uh, calendar year. And um, the second part of the, the project will be done after this uh, calendar year because this equipment is, um, there's just a longer wait to get the switch and that um, will be required for the last phase of the project. So that's the, um, 
the explanation. And if you have any detailed questions, Derek's here and can answer those. So when you say whole school, does that mean actually being able to hold school when the power's out, lights in all the rooms and so forth? Yep. Yeah, assuming, that's a big advance. I'm assuming we would do that though and put the middle school and high school off and then spend them. Uh well the middle high school project's not too far behind. Yep. Yeah. But you know, there if if something happened in the interim, there would be an issue of right. if one's only one school can right. attend. Right. Yeah. Where did this generator go? Um, Derek, location? It should be um, just behind the dumpsters behind the Asa Haddam School. So there's a there's a meter that's already in place out there. And there'll be a slab uh, next to that. It's an on existing time like payment there. Okay. The question is, is it on the pavement or out on the grass? Out of the grass. Yep. Yeah. yeah, there's not much asphalt back there, really. Yeah, there's there's a little bit, um, but not enough. They, they needed a certain clearance from um, an existing structure that was there, as well as um, the meter itself. So it, it was kind of a, a borderline both scenario so there might be a little bit of asphalt to take up but uh, uh the pads are going to have clearance from both structures other questions Mayor, do you yeah. need the motion for the 105,101 um or... there's also the 50,000 but that's the project that's coming later yeah Sorry, go ahead. Do you want to do both now? I think so. That would be helpful. Okay. Because we need to enter into contract with them for both. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So 52, 270, So I would make a motion to authorize the superintendent to enter into a contract with Milton Cat Power for 157,005, not to exceed 157,500. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? We'll go well, I, just, I just, oh, I'm just, go ahead. Was asking a question. I just uh, clarify like where exactly, I'm trying, I'm looking at a map and trying to understand. So it's, it's not regrading, it's just putting it on the grass like back in the, in the back in space thing. Like, I don't remember where the dumpsters are. So when yeah, you drive around behind the school? Yeah. There's uh, just a small little parking area and entry into like the mechanical space. And just to, on the left side of that area is the dumpster. And behind that there's grass kind of behind fourth grade, third grade rooms. And that you can see out to the ball fields on the other side of that. So like on the west? Yeah, okay. Right. But it's not it's not regrading or it's just like existing grass that's sitting there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any grading work that has to be done. Nope. It's pretty flat. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not it's not near the hill or anything of that nature. It's, okay. it's just it's trying to picture. Right. And it's not next to the Orono Sedge. Right. That's in the in the ditch, basically. That's in the ditch, yep. Yeah. Check that out. It won't be in the sedge. No. <laughs> that is a built in there again about that. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? We'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. Uh, I vote aye. Passes five to zero. Next up, yeah. We, yeah, next up, yeah, we have the vendor contract for the playground at ASA. So this is um, something else that, you know, we were putting on our capital improvement list and um, but needed to move it up and thought we had a business partner 
that um, the ASAP um, PTO was trying to uh, secure, but that really didn't work out. And so we were going to try to do this project next summer. But when I realized we had um, a, a small amount, like 100,000 left in ESSER after um, this portion from the generator, um, we can pay for 103,000 of this project out of ESSER and pay for the, the rest from our capital improvement funds. Um, so this is a great opportunity to get that project done. And ASA has selected the option that we're going with, and it's gonna be a really nice replacement for that red playground structure that's really uh, looking and feeling quite tired and, and hard to get replacement parts for as things go bad. Are there any concept drawings or images? Yeah, they're in the, you should see oh, them in the folder. If you scroll down, yeah. you can see the concept images, or not concept, just the actual schematics. I love playgrounds. What is the surface? Is it chips or is it some other surface? Oh, it's chips. We'll put chips down after it's installed. Okay. It's not a rubber surface? No. Good. I would make a motion to authorize the superintendent to enter into a contract with Maine Recreation and Design for the ASA playground for an amount not to exceed 124,000. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? We'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Devin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. I also vote aye. The motion carries five to zero. Let's see, next up. So each school board can send a delegate to the MESBA assembly, which passes the resolutions that uh, are the basis for, I don't think they use this word, but basically lobbying at the state legislature. Uh, we have received the draft resolutions and we'll be discussing those, but um, we would need to elect a delegate. I will say that I wrote one of the resolutions, so I would like to be a delegate to uh, be able to be there and advocate for the resolution, but obviously somebody else could run for this as well. And we can have an alternate who can watch but not vote. I'd like to nominate Brian McGill as the Irish 26 delegate to the Benjamin Delegate Assembly. I will second. Any discussion or questions? We'll go ahead. And nobody wants to be an alternate, I'm assuming. It's a Saturday morning. <laughs> All right. I, we'll go yeah, ahead. Not just in case that's what convinces us. Oh, it's a Saturday. No, 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 I want to go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All <laughs> right, we'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Evan. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. I abstain, passes four to zero to one. Next up, we have policies. Um, these came out of the policy committee meeting last week. Uh, all of these policies are basically required updates to put us back into compliance with the new uh, Title IX legislation. And Sam has done a great job uh, attending training sessions and updating our policies so that they can form. Those of you who've been on the board for a while, um, you start to notice <laughs> with changes in administration, this happens, but uh, there was a change in Title IX, I think it was four years ago, and um, we updated our policies then, and now there's been another change, so we need to update. So uh, we'll do a first read, which means it's, it's a brand new policy. It'll be coming back for a second read uh, in two weeks, but I would make a motion to recognize a first read on policy JIE, pregnant students. Is there a second? Second. Uh, it's pretty much conforming to what we already do, which is ensuring that the student has maximal opportunities to continue education. Uh, any questions or comments? Okay, we'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. 
Mark. Aye. I also vote aye. Passes five to zero. Next up, I think I will make a motion to uh, approve as uh, revisions policy ACAB and ACAB R1. Those two are coupled together. Is there a second? I second. Oh, I don't know. I jumped ACAB first. That's just the order they're listed on my computer, but we'll stick with that. So this is a uh, harassment of employees. And the core policy just says we don't like harassment. The dash R1 contains the uh, procedure for complaints um, involving harassment, but not sexual harassment. And there's an R2 that involves sexual harassment that we're getting some legal advice on before we bring those back. But, but since these are already in force and we'd like to get the policy as much updated as we can, we're going ahead with the ACAB and the ACAB R1. Um, is there any discussion or questions on these? Okay, we'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. I also vote aye. And now I would make a motion to uh, approve policies to, sorry, approve the revisions to policies ACAA, harassment of students, and ACAA-R1, student discrimination and harassment. Is there a second? Second. Exact same story, except this is students instead of employees. And there is an R2 uh, specifically involving sexual discrimination or harassment that will be coming back after legal consult. Any questions or comments? We'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. No, uh, sorry, Kevin. Aye. No, uh, aye. Mark. Aye. I also vote aye. Carries 5-0. And ACE, I would make a motion to approve policy AC uh, as a revision. Is there a second? Second. This is our kind of core master policy that is very short and to the point, lays out that we will not uh, tolerate discrimination and lists a bunch of bases for discrimination. But this also is conforming with federal and state law. Uh, in particular, some of the areas I think around, um, I think they may be both federal and state, but it's conforming with both federal and state. Are there any questions on this one? We'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. I also vote aye, carries 5-0. Thank you, Sam, for all of your work on this. And did we need to approve the playground plan or anything? No. Did we not vote like, on that? We did. Or oh, the plan? Did we? Vote on the money. Oh, yeah. I stuck with that, didn't I? No, that's one. Okay, sorry. You made me think about it. Okay. <laughs> We did, just to confirm, we did vote on that, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin's question was if the board should vote on the plan. Oh, no, no, I, I, I just uh, somehow slept through the actual vote. Oh, gotcha. it for you to enter the contract. Gotcha. Sorry, I don't know where I was. <laughs> okay, so uh, next up, we have a new ed tech position. Meredith, you want to introduce that? Yes, um, we are seeing larger than uh, larger MLL numbers in district than we've seen um, in in quite some time. I, I don't know that we've ever seen quite this many numbers, uh, at least not in anyone's recent history that's here right now. Um, and so we we really need more staffing. We're going to we're asking you to approve an ed tech um, that we can advertise for and try to fill. Uh, to help support and augment the uh, MLL program. We have a full-time MLL teacher and this ed tech would work in, under the supervision alongside that person. Uh, 
Uh, I would make a motion to authorize the superintendent to advertise and hire a MLL EdTech. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Just curiosity, I'm not doubting that this is the most we've had, but what's the approximate number of MLL students we have right now? So right now uh, we have 25, but there are 28 wow. more students that need to be screen, screened. Yeah, that's huge. Even compared to the days when we had, uh, you know, a program for Chinese students, I don't think it's right. not that large. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I guess I'm curious. Do you know, like, what, why the what change with driving it, or? Oh, it it's you know there are families who are moving into the area. Yeah. I think you know you've probably read the news. There are lots of families coming into the greater Bangor area, uh, immigrant families, and so uh, I think the housing tight housing market in Orono has kind of held that from um, occurring as much in our community. But you know we're now seeing uh, more families who are finding housing in Orono, so. Um, it's just reflective of the state trend that's that we're seeing. I mean, specifically, the Bangor area has been identified as a refugee resettlement city. Mm -hmm. uh, previously, Portland was the only, Portland and Lewiston were the only ones in the state of Maine, but now Bangor has too. So, uh, yeah, so the federal government, the federal government actually tries to direct refugees with a shared uh, origin to a common location so that they can have community and resources. So that's happening now in the Bangor area. And as Meredith described, it's affecting the towns differently, but. Well, I'm glad to see more diversity coming into our community. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go ahead and vote, Jake. Aye. Uh, Kevin. Aye. Noah? Aye. Mark? Aye. I'll also vote aye. Carries five to zero. Uh, subcommittee reports, policy subcommittee. You've seen a lot of what we've done. We will bring back the two R2 policies. Once we have legal consults, the next policy is, I believe it's BDE. It's on uh, subcommittees of the board. Uh, once the Policy committees had a chance to work on that. Uh, and we'll probably be getting, a. I know Meredith, I'm not going to be able to attend because I'm out of the country, but Meredith was go to the Drummond and Woodson, and I'm sure we'll get some work that comes out of that uh, later in September as well. UTC, I know we heard one thing. Any other updates, Kevin? So I'll, I'll add that um, you know, our last board meeting got a report about the results from Skills USA, which was in June. Uh, UTC got uh, 21 medalists, uh, medals from that. So pretty good representation from uh, the northern end of Maine here. So they continue to do very well uh, in these competitions. And we have a board meeting on a Thursday to approve the warrant for the bond. That's it. Great, thank you. Curriculum subcommittee is meeting in two days, be the first one of the year. Anything else to add on curriculum, Susan? No, nope. okay. I uh, don't think the wellness committee's met. The DI leadership team has not met. And I guess that's gonna be rolled into the strategic plan team. Um, I don't think we've set dates for that yet, right? We've outlined a uh, structure, but have we set dates yet? We have set dates, yes. Okay. So the first meeting is the 26th of September. No, the 20, yes, the 26th of September. Yeah, I'll be sending out an email about that. And that's the 3rd. So I'm trying to remember what it's where we're at. So last time you had asked for representatives from different sub Right. Yes. And that's what you're sending an email follow up about? Yes. Or? Okay. Yes. So it's not something to talk about now. Nah, okay. Or do you have a question? Well, I don't know. I guess, yeah. I guess I'm trying to get the, I thought we were gonna talk about like, I don't know. Who what are I guess I'm just curious where it's at, but I guess email. Yeah, you're the only person I heard from. 
on the board uh, of the uh, Brian. Um, so okay, you can have your pick of committee. So okay, because <laughs> you gave me two. Okay, we can talk after the meeting. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Um. So we'll have more to report after that after that first meeting. But the main update is you know the the work on the um the document at this point. And that is that twenty six meeting. Who is going to that? Uh, folks who are interested in being on our leadership team for you know okay. helping us implement the plan. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it'll be, you know, teachers, administrators, you know, any board members that want to be a part of it. So, okay. Some parents. And that will be at the three thirty time slot. Yes. It's going to work like uh, our DEI leadership team worked. So. so quarterly meetings of the entire group and then the committee meetings, subcommittees meeting monthly? Yes, I, I I scheduled five meetings for this year because I just felt like we probably needed more uh, meeting yep. time to, to gain some momentum. So I have a schedule of those dates that I'll share. Great. Okay, any other business? Any requests for future agenda items? Any public comment? We'll go ahead, our next uh, meeting will be a back-to-back. -back. We'll have a uh, messaging workshop at 5.30 in the library. And invitations have gone out to some stakeholders, the uh, welcoming ambassadors and some others to attend that meeting. That'll be an informal workshop. Uh, and that will be at 530. And then we'll have a regular board meeting at seven o'clock, both in the library and on Zoom on September 24th. Any requests for information and follow up? I would motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We'll go ahead and vote. Jake. Aye. Kevin. Aye. Noah. Aye. Mark. Aye. I also vote aye. Carries five to zero. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Good night. I'm <laughs> going